Hey, good evening, folks. Welcome to the Let's Go Fishing Show. I'm Steve Cox, your host, and glad to be here, tickled to death. And I got my right hand man here again tonight, Mike Cox. And Mike, good to have you. Good to be back again. All right. Maybe uh, you feeling any better? Not much. All right. Well, the technical difficulty last week covered up a lot of your coughing, so uh, uh, we still got that going on, folks. Uh, uh, the sponsors are not running on the bottom of the screen, as you've noticed, but we do have the call-in number up there. And uh, I tell you what, uh, you know, I did uh, I've had a lot of sickness in the family this past week, and and I didn't get to do any fishing to get any film, Mike. So we're going to show that Heartland weigh-in again, and this time hopefully with some volume, so uh, or some audio, and uh, give those boys a chance to uh, give the people I talk to and where you can hear them and and uh, they got some good things to say, and uh, I think it was only fitting that we rerun that, and, and uh, I'd like to hear it myself. So uh, uh, we're going to do that here in a few minutes. Uh, got a couple of things to say. want to say hello to my dad. Uh, got an update from Bill Nichols on Polly. Uh, she's doing a lot better, still in the hospital, uh, and uh, hopefully you get to come home next week. And uh, I want to say hello to the Ed Kelly family down in uh, uh, the Oliver Springs way. And uh, the Underwood family lost a member of their family here uh, last week and uh, uh, convey my condolences on to them. Uh, good friend of mine, for been, has been for years. Uh, but we're going to show this film here tonight on the way in and, and uh, give us a chance to uh, Get a drink of water, Mike, and get ready for what's coming up after the show, or after the film, and uh, uh, hope to have a good show here tonight. Got several things to uh, bring up, talk about, and hopefully this weekend maybe we can get some fishing film, Mike. Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. Uh, well, you know, it's it's time. Uh, uh, the ducks are pairing off, and oh, and the geese are pairing <laughs> off, and and you know it, it's it's time to be catching. Yeah, I got the fever bad. Yeah, I, I have too. It's fish and fever. Uh, so anyway, uh, folks, uh, we'll we'll go to that film, that Heartland Way in, and uh, Herschel, go ahead and show that, and we'll be back shortly. Large mouth five eight two. We're down here at the Heartland Way Inn at Lad Landing and uh, got the tail end of the way in here. A lot of people have been weighed in. Uh, some more good bags of fish coming in, so uh, we'll see what the winners say. <laughs> Thank you. 
Not what you did on last time. Hey, you guys want to get to the thing you can be <laughs> Big fish, how much them weigh? Uh, they were both six of them. Six of them? Both of them were six. Okay, there right, you go, man. Appreciate it. Yeah, we're going to have to get a picture. Let me get one. All right, come on, Bethany. Uh-huh. Are all these old deals in cahoots together? Huh? Yeah. Right. Yeah, it's a model. I think Jason did
Third place go to Jimmy Flanagan and Robert Evans with 2083. Second place, Hayden Everett and Dustin Mason with 2112. First place, Seth Robinson and Jason O'Dell with 2478. They also got Largemouth Lunker with a 654. Good job. Pretty good. Smallmouth Lunker goes to Matt Lett and Andy Holston with uh, 397. Hey, folks, I got the winners here Jason Oldale and Seth Robinson. What was tell us about today? How much weight you have? Make up the whole thing here. 2478. 2478, folks. Five fish. That's a that's a pretty good average. That's a pretty good average. And you also had two over six pounds. Didn't had two fish over six pounds. So uh, they won big fish first place. Uh, a great bag of fish. Uh, anything you'd like to tell the viewers? You know how you caught your fish? Where you caught them? I mean, we know you don't watch bar. Hopefully. <laughs> okay, they were on the watch bar, folks. Uh, you know, we'll have to figure out where we're at later on. Uh, deep, shallow? Uh, on the ledges. On the ledges? Okay. Mid range, folks, uh, if that helps you any. Uh, you guys wasn't throwing float fly or anything like that? Fire fishing? Okay, good deal. Listen, guys, I'm just aggravating. I appreciate you guys getting on the camera with me. If you want to come to the show Thursday night, you're more than welcome. I'd like to have you over. Yeah, they get tired of hearing me, right, folks? Hey, congratulations. Yes, sir. Two good fishermen right here, folks. Two daddies. All right, thank you, boys. Okay, man. Boys, folks, remember the sponsors of the Let's Go Fishing Show. Uh, my buddy had 18, almost 19 pounds a day. I'm proud of him. He done real good. I was net man, so hey, we're, we're a team. You know what I mean? Uh, don't forget to sponsors and watch the Let's Go Fishing Show. Hey folks, I got Jeff right here, and, and uh, Jeff's not only a fisherman, an angler, he's the way master here for the heartland, and uh, Jeff, how'd y'all do today? Uh, we caught a bunch of fish, just nowhere near what everybody else did today. Yeah. We won the last one, but not this one. Yeah. Well, it's hard to get two in the row, but it happens, you yep. know. And uh, But, you know, what I want you to tell us is, uh, he's the way master, so he handles all the fish, and uh, that's a pretty good job when you got a lot of boats and a lot of fish waiting, right? Well, I can always say I'm going to hold the fish the wings today. Hold so the fish the wings. It might not be my fish. We'll, we'll have them today, but uh, everybody took real good care of the fish today. We had several people who treats their water. It doesn't matter if it's cold water or not. you got to put your chemicals in. got to take care of your fish. Get them right back in the water. The water's cool. I don't don't believe we had a dead fish today, but you got to take care of your fish. The boys that had the really big, every big bag of fish, as I was taking them out, they had treated water. By treated, you take chemicals, um, stay alive, uh, you, you read the back of the bottle, look at your boat, tell what kind of uh, live wells you got, keep your aerators running, even if it's cold, they got to live. They got to live. They're going to get stressed out here in the next month. You'll start killing a lot of fish. You know, it's, it takes a long time. I remember I've fished down here for 25 years. And, it's taken a long time to get these solid four and five pound average fish up here, and it, it, you got to take care of them. You're exactly right, Jeff. We got to take care of the resource here and protect our fish. Make sure we don't leave any out here floating around. Uh, you know, and, and you're exactly right. That's exactly what I wanted you to tell the audience, and uh, so that everybody can do that. And, and uh, I appreciate you. Guys. Yes, sir. Okay, good, good job. Thanks See you, buddy. Fish. All right. All right, folks, back to us again. Uh, <clears throat> I hope you got to see that. Uh, Jason O'Dell and, and Zach Robson there, the winners of the tournament. A nice bag of fish. Uh, probably said that last week, but still the same way here now that you got to, to hear them talk. Uh, Mike, uh, Mike and I were sitting here talking and, and, and kind of rehearsing there with what Jeff Wright said about the fish, Mike. Uh, taking care of your catch. Oh, definitely. Uh, uh, even even in cooler <laughs> temperatures, uh, you know, uh, it's disheartening when you go to a bass tournament 
or any kind of tournament, and you see a lot of fish floating around at the launch ramp uh, after the weigh-in. Yeah, especially everybody drive off and leave them too. Yeah, exactly right. <coughs> that's that's not good either. Uh, so you know what uh, what Jeff was talking about was keeping those fish alive, uh, uh, adding some chemicals, some some treatment, uh, uh, bass saver or fish alive or whatever uh, you 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 might be using, and and there is a, uh, a formula that you can mix up your own. Uh, uh, fish saver mic and uh, uh, that kind of thing. But using that kind of stuff is, and, and as the direction says, uh, you can put too much in there. Oh yeah, yeah. You, yeah. you surely can. But uh, even in these cooler conditions, uh, and as the temperatures heat up, uh, uh, that kind of thing uh, later on in the year, we, uh, uh, you know, you definitely want to be using it, but there's nothing wrong with using it right now. It, it helps a whole lot. No, and if you catch them deep, you may have to let the air out of them. Uh, that's very true. Uh, may have to do that. Uh, a few a month ago, we were at a Heartland tournament on Norris, and and uh, <clears throat> four or five fish swimming around there couldn't go down. Go down, laying on their side. Lay, laying on their side, and and. Uh, uh, the, the boy there, and, and he said, hey, he said, you got a needle? And I said, yeah. And uh, so we went down there. He gathered up the fish for us, and, and we went letting air out of them. Let the air out of them, too. And uh, with, there was two that, that, that wouldn't make it, and I told him he needed to just take those home and, 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 and flay them out and eat them, uh, you know, not waste them. But uh, we did get uh, two of the five, or three of the five, back down and swam off. But there was two there that we could never get uh, uh, get the uh, get them to swim off, and, and they kept turning up, and and uh, you know so we didn't think they were going to make it. But uh, you do uh, have to fizz them sometimes uh, when you catch them deep, and and even in the winter time, uh, not just in the summer, they get that air in there. And you know what what we're talking about this thing is this when those fish are laying on their side, they're only getting the one side of the gill plate is out of the water. Yeah. Well, to start with, he's only getting half the oxygen that he needs. That's for sure. You, you know, so uh, they, they're coming up with devices. Uh, uh, they've got weights uh, and, and two or three other things that people's working on to, when you've got them in the live well, instead of letting them lay on one side, it kind of holds them up straight, uh, you know, in, in your live well. And uh, Mike keeps them under the water, That's basically, right. uh, is what that is. So that when they're, you know, under stress and this kind of thing, you get both gills under the water, uh, and, and and they're getting uh, a full potential of the oxygen uh, uh, out of the water. Uh, the other way, they're only getting half of it to start with. Plus, they're not breathing as as natural as they should for being under stress and that kind of thing. So. Uh, all those things have effect on, on keeping your catch alive uh, and that kind of thing. You catch one, you check back in on him 15, 20 minutes later and he's already rolled up on his side, you need to let the air out of him in, not wait till after you weigh him in to try to do it because he'll get so stressed out that it just kills him out. Yeah, uh, and, <clears throat> and, and that's true. And, and there's uh, two or three different ways to do that. Some people do it down in their mouth, and some people do it on below the lateral line, lining up. There's, there's, uh, uh, get on the internet, and then I think in your uh, Tennessee fishing guide, yep. it tells you how to do that. Mm -hmm. And we do carry needles, and uh, pretty good size needle. Yep. Uh, because those <laughs> they're a little tough. Yeah, getting you know. that swim bladder, it is. Yeah, uh, getting into the swim bladder, and uh, you know, let the air out of the fish, and, and so he can go back down, and uh, uh, you know. Uh, that little prick that you make with that needle, if you're in the right place, it's not going to hurt. Uh, it's been tested and proven fact that that, that, that heals up pretty quick. Uh, it doesn't you know, bother them, affect them near as bad as them laying out there on the surface uh, with one gill out of the water and uh, them trying to, to get down and, and can't do yeah. it. So, uh, uh, like Mike said, check the fish out 10 or 15 minutes after you put him in the live well. Uh, if they're up on their side, then you need to be thinking about uh, uh, 
fizzing the fish, what we call fizzing, and letting that air out of him so we can set up straight and, and get all the oxygen he needs. So uh, that's just a, a good little pointer there, and, and I was glad to get that information from Jeff uh, right there at the weigh-in because uh, he handles a lot of fish. And uh, uh, there's, there's penalties in, our turn, in a lot of the tournaments now for dead fish and, and that kind of thing. So uh, you want to take care of your fish and, and uh, uh, make sure that they, uh, they're, they're in good shape when you bring them into the live well or to the weigh-in and then when it naturally when you release them back into the water uh, that they do swim off and not be running around there up on top. That's for sure. Because uh, that, that, that looks bad on us fish. <coughs> we all know we can do better than that. Uh, and, and not just bass, you know. If you're if you're catching crappie or uh, uh, catfish right. or uh, <coughs> whatever it might be, uh, you know, when you release that fish, if it if it's struggling, you need to try to do something, you know, to help. It. And uh, uh, we get uh, uh, catfish guys back over here, Mike. We're gonna find out if uh, they have that kind of problem. I don't know, but I know I've had it on the crappie and had to even. The, eight ten inches you know try to turn him back loose he wouldn't go down you'd have to catch him back and mm -hmm. put the air out of him so he'd go back down you catch him out of 30 40 foot of water yeah <clears throat> exactly right you know uh, uh, like i said it's not only the bass it's it's all the fish and uh, uh when you're catching them out deep like that uh, uh they uh, they get that air buff, air pocket in there and, and uh, uh you know you can't go back down yeah they have to keep pressurizing that to make up for that pressure against them the deeper they go and then when you bring them up real quick then it blows way out it, it knocked their eyes out and everything else you see them on some of them uh, shows where they're catching them uh, fish off shore out there 100 mm -hmm. 200 foot deep and you see their eyes run out three inches and stuff yeah. where they, uh, blow them up so much to bring them up uh, that's true mike that's exactly right uh, uh last week we showed the uh i was Fishing there in, in, the, in the Emory, uh, I was pitching and flipping a jig and caught some fish. But when I got to see the replay Saturday night, I done a real poor job of filming that, and uh, I, I I don't know how that happened because I had the camera centered up on my helmet and I had my helmet on and and all that kind of stuff. But anyway, I'm gonna go back down there and especially if it rains here tonight or tomorrow, Mike. Yep. You know, mm -hmm. uh, you know what I'm talking oh, about. Oh yeah, I know what you're yeah. talking about. And, and uh, uh, I'm going to go back down there and, and uh, when that water muddies up again and see if I can do the same thing. That's and right. Hopefully, get you some good film on that, folks. I, I'm going to work on this filming thing. Uh, I'm just not satisfied with what's going on. So uh, uh, I might have to carry Mike along with me, be my film, you know, be my film my cameraman. Yeah. Uh, but uh, you got you got to watch him. He's bad about laying that camera down, leaving it running, and all you, all you see is the side of the boat. <laughs> so uh, anyway, we're we're going to move right along. Cause, uh, we're going to take a call in a little bit. Uh, got a couple of quick things. Uh, yep. Want to talk about folks the free fishing trip, and we're going to pick those. I'm going to pick those boxes up next week, and. Yep. Uh, so please get by the sponsors and ask them, you know, go in and ask them, you know, where the restoration and box is for the free fishing trip. That way they know that you're watching and you know about it and, and, and it just keeps things rolling. So, uh, but, you know, uh, get, get some things in the box for me. Uh, you know, when you go to the sponsors and uh, I'm going to give you a list of the sponsors, uh, Bunch Marine, Reynolds Racing uh, and Marine, uh, the Sign Shop, Edgemore Outdoors, Citizens First Bank, the Five Branches, Anywhere, Oneida, Watberg, Oak Ridge, Harriman, and Oliver Springs. <laughs> Any of those five branches will get you, has <coughs> got the boxes and the forms to sign up for the free fishing trip. And my plan is this. We're going to bring those tickets in. We're going to dump them all out in a box, yeah. shake them up, and get somebody uh in here that's uh i don't know we'll we'll, we'll bring some we'll do something mike get somebody to draw that we can trust you know yeah, I that's don't know. what i was thinking you're gonna uh, say trustworthy yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay <laughs> and uh, uh but we will we're gonna draw right here on the show 
And whoever the winner is, the following week, I want to have them over here on the show so we can discuss what they want to do. You know, that's my, kind of my plan. And, uh, uh, Mike, to, to, you know, we got to get things set up here so, you know, get this thing on the, on the road here. So sure. uh, uh, the fishing's only going to get better here for the next few weeks. Yeah. And uh, uh, so uh, I want to get this done. But please go by and sign up for the free fishing trip. Uh, the forms are there and uh, all that kind of stuff, so uh, get that done. Uh, another sponsor got to mention is Tim's Tire down there in Harriman. Folks, you can't beat his prices. There's no way. Uh, and any kind of tires you're looking for, he's going to have them. Mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> Mountain Pizza. Uh, they have a special on Tuesday nights. Uh, one large topping pizza, four ninety nine. And Then on Saturday nights, they got all the different kind of foods you can eat. Uh, uh, down there, plus the pizzas, and they have that karaoke thing. So uh, don't forget that on Saturday night. That's Mountain Pizza. Uh, <clears throat> Carm, anything you can do to help those people. Uh, you know, like I said last week, they feed about a thousand people a day over there, and uh, uh, a lot of other things. So uh, uh, I'm hoping to get one of their representatives over here with me one night and. And let them tell you what uh, a lot about their organization, and uh, but anything you can do to help them would be greatly appreciated. All right, moving right along. Uh, something I went over last week uh, in last week's show, and it's going to be we do have some commercial breaks we're going to show here shortly. Uh, these this Denali rod offer at Edgemore Outdoors up here, uh, Mike. If you know, they're a sponsor of the Heartland Anglers, and Jim's a sponsor of the Heartland and a sponsor of the show, and he's got the Denali rods, and if you buy two of those rods, you go to the website, uh, www.denalirods.com, and uh, register. Well, then if you're fishing a Heartland, and it's got 10 boats or more, in the tournament, then you come back and uh, uh, send your you know submit your restoration form, your winners form where you win in there, and, and it's two hundred and fifty dollars. Mike, I keep trying to borrow the money from my wife, or I won't buy me a couple. Of you know, uh, I, I, you know, once you buy those first two rods, and uh, when you see this commercial, I won't go into the price of those rods because I've done them there at the store with Jim. And uh, but you buy those two rods, and then you get sign you register yourself, and then when you win the tournament, you come back in and and uh, uh, submit your uh, restoration form for your money, and you get two hundred and fifty dollars. If you win two tournaments, you know the two fifty is going to pay for the two rods. So at that point, they're free. Yeah. 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 And exactly. then whenever you win the next tournament, uh, Heartland tournament. You get another two hundred and fifty dollars. Hey. So uh, money in the bank, yeah. That's that's money in the <laughs> bank, and uh, can't uh, beat that deal. You can't beat that deal. And I tell you what, you fishermen, you better check out those rods. That's the main thing right there, Mike. Yeah, them super rods. They they <laughs> they're they're in line with what we like to use. I'll tell yeah. you that. I mean, uh, uh, they're they're nice. So uh, if you're in the rod market. Keep that in mind. Uh, get the edge more up there and, and get you some of those Denali rods and, and sign up for the uh, uh, the extra money if you're fishing the Heartland Tournament, uh, for sure. So uh, moving right along, uh, let's see here what else we had. Uh, yeah, uh, on the sponsors, remember their website, uh, Bunch Marine, uh, www.bunchmarine.com get you a lot of information on the tournament they got going on, the boat giveaway they got going on, uh, all that kind of stuff. Plus a lot of new and used boats, prices on accessories they've got down there. They got a lot of info on their website. Uh, and uh, most of these sponsors that I've got has a website and, and you can get with them, uh, you know, you just uh, yeah, it's all over the web, man. It's, it's everywhere. So uh, you know, get get on there and, and hunt them up, 
and uh, see what they got to offer and uh, uh, all that kind of stuff. The sign shop down there, you know, they, they do signs, uh, political signs, all kinds of signs, uh, in, indoor, outdoor signs. Uh, Amy and Adrian just do a heck of a job down there uh, at the sign shop. So I uh, want to remember those people for sure. Uh, Herschel, how about giving me about a two-minute break right here, and we'll turn the phones on and, and keep doing our thing. Hey, good morning, folks. I'm here at Bunch Marine, and just wanted to give you all a little heads up on some things going on down here. Uh, you know, spring fishing's here, and uh, need to stop by, check out the great deals that they've got here at Bunch Marine on you. Uh, uh, new and used boats uh, and uh, if you can't come by visit them on the website at www.bunchmarine.com check all that out they've got some great uh, uh, info on there uh, about boats and, and, and a lot of other things going on remember to sign up for the, the kicking bass ranger boat giveaway uh, need to check that out here at Bunch Marine and then also to the free fishing trip offered by the let's go fishing show so uh, don't forget, you know, come by here. And if you can't come by, before you come by, check it out on the website, see what they got to offer. They got a lot of good used engines on there. I was on there the other day, uh, several, uh, the Mercury uh, 250s, 225s. Uh, I think they had a 115. Anyway, get on that website and look all that stuff over and, and or you can come by down here and ask them about it. And, and I think you'll be well pleased. So. Premier, de Premier Ranger dealer in this area, Bunch Marine, and uh, let them know that you watched, uh, saw this on the Let's Go Fishing Show. And don't forget to sign up for the free fishing trip. See you Thursday night. Folks, I'm down here at Harriman at Citizens First Bank and uh, talking to these people, friendly people down here. I guarantee you, you won't find any better people than uh, here at the bank. So if you've got any banking needs whatsoever, give them a chance to get your business if you don't already have business with them. Uh, they've got all types of loans, uh, services, safety deposit boxes, uh, you know, just everything in the world. Uh, electronic banking of all types so there's no reason and, and I guarantee you you won't find any friendlier people than that Citizens First Bank any branch you want to go to uh, and I've been to them all and they're all the same uh, they're here to help you whatever it might be if you need some firewood and need somebody to get it from call them they'll I guarantee you they'll, they'll, they'll know somebody that's got firewood for sale so I got a gentleman holding his hand up over here right now. So whatever your banking needs might be or whatever your needs are, call these people. They'd be more than glad to help you, I promise. Thank you. Remember the, uh, them as a sponsor of Let's Go Fishing Show. All right, folks. Uh, got those two good sponsors in there. Uh, listen, Mike, <laughs> I have started to tell folks there last week about the... Uh, fishing fiasco down there at the weigh-in yep. uh, week before last there at the Heartland weigh-in. We were all, everybody was done. Uh, uh, we were uh, standing there under the uh, uh, canopy there talking, and this gentleman walks up and, and uh, well, I just tell you, he was hung up on the boat ramp. He, he came down there, had a pontoon boat, and uh, uh, but it wouldn't have mattered if he'd had a four-wheel drive vehicle. He had a two-wheel drive vehicle. And under normal circumstances, he could have put in over there on the other side of the ramp and not had a bit of trouble. Mm -hmm. But the water's way, you know, the water's way down. So uh, uh, my tackle box tip for the week is this. If you're going to a strange boat ramp that you haven't used before and you see somebody there, it'd be wise to ask them if they're a local and do they put in there a lot, uh, you know, if the ramp's okay. Because what happened was we went down there and tried to pull this guy out. There's about mm -hmm. six or eight of us around his vehicle. Well, we couldn't budge it. So I said, okay, I'll get my truck. 
And I went up there and unhooked my boat in the parking lot, pulled my truck down there and got my uh, straps out. I carry some uh, slings there to, in case I run into a problem or somebody. And you know, and, and anyway, got all my stuff out of the bed of the truck, hooked up to him, and I couldn't budge him. Why? I mean, it was, <laughs> well, when I got back out of the truck and backed up a little bit and they unhooked me from, from him and everything, well, but he, there was air bubbles coming out from back there at his trailer tires. So mm -hmm. we had punctured. I don't know if he had a dual axle trailer or a single, but he, was on, he had a big pontoon boat there uh, tied up to the dock. And uh, I could tell this guy was from out of town. But anyway, we punctured his tire, me trying to pull him out. Still couldn't budge it. So I went back up there. They, they called the wrecker. I went back up to the parking lot, hooked up my boat, and done everything up and got ready to go, and then walked back down there. By then, the wrecker was there, and he was trying to pull the truck and the trailer all at one time. Yeah. Well, it wouldn't budge. It wouldn't he was budge. about to pull the front end out of the truck. Yeah. So, bottom line was, the wrecker guy had told, had told that gentleman, said, said you're going to have to unhook, said, let's unhook the trailer, let me get your truck out, and then we'll try to get the trailer out. Yeah. So, uh, you know, and, and, and I told that guy whenever we were walking down to his truck the first time, I said, man, I said, I wish you'd have hollered at one of us. I'd have told you to put in over on the dock side of the boat ramp there at Lad Landing uh, during this time of year in the low water conditions because that uh, uh, upstream side of that boat ramp has a drop off on the end yeah. of it. And when you... You know, when it drops off, it, you're hung. Uh, so, and that's what happened. And I don't know if there's rebar sticking out the end of that concrete. Oh, yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. just about guaranteed. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, yeah. I've seen it. So, uh, uh, you know, that was the deal. And uh, so that's something that, well, I, the tip I wanted to pass along to you was when you go to a strange ramp that you don't use regularly and there's some people around, don't, you know, ask them. You know, hey, how's the ramp? Uh, it might save you a lot of trouble. Yeah, right. sure might. Uh, that fire loading is a lot of the trouble on them ramps. The, all that thrust from them motors, it just washes everything out from the end of them ramps and, and leaves them drop-offs like that. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, that's got to do with a lot of it, washing it out like that. Uh, yeah. A lot of thrust off them motors and them trying to shove them up on them trailers and, you got somebody in the truck and just let them roll the truck back or uh, while you just sit there and hold it in gear, you can usually just idle right up to the uh, stop there and latch it and go on. Right, uh, right. Uh, you, uh, and that's, you know, so that's that's another thing right there, uh, you know, uh, about loading your boat up. Uh, uh, if you've got somebody in the vehicle, now if you're by yourself, it's a little different situation. Yeah, usually if I'm by myself, I'll pull it up there, and when it stops, I leave it in gear, go climb off the front and pick it up or hook the winch to it and winch it on up while it's sitting there idling in gear because that helps take the load off the winch, and then you can get back in there and put it in neutral and back out and pull on up. Mm -hmm. it, uh, well, there's several different methods to do that. Yeah. Uh, if you've got somebody that's in the vehicle backing your trailer in and you mm -hmm. Uh, you know, we all have these drive on trailers, and, and uh, you ease up there, and, and, and as the truck's backing up, you're just kind of just a little more than an idle with your engine, and then just bumps your front roller, and you can latch mm -hmm. it down and pull that. A lot of it depends on how steep the ramps are, too. You get one that's too steep, you back up too far, and you go in there, and you uh, submarine right into your roller and tear the front of your boat up, or uh, right. something like that, you know. So it's a little bit tricky on the steeper ramps to. Load more. It is. The canal ramp at Telecove, prime example. Yeah. If you yeah. back in too far, you've nose dived your nose of your boat and under the front roller. Yeah. On yeah. the trailer. Yeah. Seen Canyon, it happen. Canyon Creek's a little bit steep. Canyon Creek's a little bit steep. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, it, definitely for a fact. So uh, Some of the others get too shallow. You back pull them out there and your front wheels will be in the water and you still ain't deep enough to put your boat on the trailer. Yeah, exactly right. <coughs> well, that's what. Well, I, at Little Emory the other day when I went down there, I went that way and I pulled in there at that ramp and this guy, this gentleman was fixing to put his boat in and I just 
kind of helped him there and stood back and watched. And I seen right quick. I said, "Up, oh, I'll just drive on over to Lad Land." Yeah, you know that kind of. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, uh, but uh, anyway, uh, these boat ramps can be tricky, folks. This time of year, and there's no need in tearing up a nice vehicle uh, or your boat trailer. Uh, you know uh, that kind of thing and hanging up your vehicle to boot too. So uh, uh, you want to. It's a lot of. I guess uh, things that you have to do and don't do, uh, and them guys down there at that way in said, man, you ought to have had your camera down here filming this as on what not to do at the boat ramp. I said, yeah. I said, I probably should have. Uh, mm -hmm. But, uh, uh, you know, we were busy trying to help the gentleman and, and uh, that kind of thing. So, uh, but, you know, you can get in trouble at a boat ramp, especially in these in, in low water conditions. Uh, <clears throat> it makes a lot of difference. Okay, Herschel, turn the phones on, and uh, they're on. All right, good deal. So we're going to keep talking about a few things here. Mike, you had something else you wanted to say about a boat trailer. What was it? <clears throat> you got these uh, bearings and stuff, checking your bearings out on these boat trailers. Uh, some of the old models, you used to have to pull it plumb off, knock the bearings out of your hubs and everything, uh, pack your bearings back, and then put the back one back in, put the seal back in, and put it back up on there, and uh, put everything back together. Uh, the newer ones, uh, what they call a reverse lube, they've drilled the center of the axle back to where it's right between, they cross drill it right between where the seal and the back bearing is, and the grease goes through the axle and up through there, and then flushes everything back out the front side. and. Uh, you have to spin it and slowly spin it as you pump that grease in there and it'll just flush all that stuff out of your uh, bearings and everything, put clean grease in there. But the best thing to do is when you grease them is also look at your tars and see if there's a high spot and a low spot and a high spot and a low spot in your tars and stuff because that could either mean you've either got a warped wheel or your bearing's too loose and your wheel's just sitting there flopping. Mm -hmm. So your bearing needs to be tightened up. So if you're going to tighten that bearing up, you tighten it up after you got your quarter pin out of it and spin it till it starts dragging. When it starts dragging and slowing down, then back it up to the first notch and put your pin back in it, and you've got it where it needs to be. All right. That sounds like some pretty good stuff. Now, and a lot of the newer traders now, Mike, have these... Uh, uh, they're oil field oil hubs, field hubs yes. and stuff, but they they still wear. And, they and still wear. They that, got bearings um, in there. They're bearings, just run, yeah. running yes, in oil sir. rather than grease. And then you know, if you've got brakes, you need to check them brakes too and, and see if they're dragging or whether they're wore out down to the metal. And, and you may have to replace the brakes on them. Mm -hmm. All Just right. them back up and everything. Okay. While we're waiting on the phone call, well, let's let's start hitting these tournaments here. Uh, We've got the Reynolds Racing and Marine Community Crappie Tournament and Fish Fry, folks. And I'm going to be involved in this because, uh, Mike, I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to check it out of work at lunchtime, and I'm going down there, and they're supposed to be help them get set up and get the grease hot and, and uh, start cooking some crappie. And that's mm -hmm. uh, uh, taking place on April the 12th. You crappie fishermen. It's a crappie tournament. And uh, <clears throat> it's going to be at Kingston City Park, April the 12th. Blast off at 8 a.m. and we're going to weigh in at 1:30 p.m. And uh, uh, sometime between 1:30 and 2:30, we're going to eat. You know, uh, that's the plan. And uh, the entry fee is $30 per boat. Uh, three people maximum per boat, and uh, weigh in 15 crappie from each boat. And uh, I was talking to Glenn uh, uh, yesterday, and you know, we there's nothing says you can't fish from the bank. You know, uh, if you're if you're fishing by yourself, uh, you you're gonna weigh in 15 crappie if you got yeah. 15. So, uh, it, you know, uh, you crappie fishermen, this this right here is a, a good good way to. <laughs> if to, you don't bring in any crappie, can you still eat? Well, <laughs> Mike. <laughs> I'm not going to bring in any, but I'm going to eat. Yeah. I guarantee. Uh, Glenn's working on some of the fixings. They're talking uh, mm -hmm. potato salad, hush mm -hmm. puppies, coleslaw. Mm -hmm. uh, 
drinks and, and that kind of thing. So, uh, uh, you know, it's it's like we said there last week. I can't believe we don't have a crappie trail around here. That's for sure. I don't know sure. what, you know, what it takes to get one going, but uh, uh, if I wasn't bass fishing uh, a lot, I wouldn't care to be running one myself. Yeah, they probably 10 to 1 out here at crappie fishes, it, too, to it, a bass. Yeah, wouldn't doubt that a bit. But anyway, you, some of you crappie fishermen, be, that'd be something for y'all to think about. But don't forget about the crappie tournament going on April the 12th, 8 o'clock, and you can pre-register. Uh, uh, go by down there at uh, Reynolds Racing Marine. You can pre-register uh, before the 12th and, and, and get signed up and uh, all that kind of stuff. So uh, uh, remember that for sure. That's going to that's gonna be a good deal right there. Uh, the catfish guys uh, over here at uh, their next tournament is April the 12th, uh, Riverside Landing at Fort Loudon. Uh, so you catfishers, don't forget about that. Uh, the East Tennessee Catfish Anglers, April the 12th, Riverside Landing, 8 a.m. to 3 p.m. So if you're interested in that. Uh, the Volunteer Bass Trail, uh, James Knuckles Phoenix Boat uh, uh, Sponsored Tournament uh, is uh, their next tournament April the 19th at North Point 19. Uh, restorations uh, April 18th on Friday mm -hmm. afternoon, 3 p.m. to 6 p.m. And then uh, uh, tournaments on Saturday, 4.30, you can register there. Uh, till safe light, uh, be restoration, and then uh, uh, ease off and, and weigh in at 3, 3 p.m. So uh, uh, that's the t volunteer bass trail. That's the orange and white division. You can fish the orange division, $50 entry fee, white division's $150. Uh, guaranteed 100% payback in the tournament. So uh, remember that. Uh, the next one is the uh, Tennessee Valley Team Championship Series presented by Bunch Marine. And their first tournament is April the 19th, folks. That's just a few weeks away, Mike. Mm -hmm. It's on Fort Loudon at the Canal. First place guaranteed, $5,000. Entry fees, one fifty. And this is where you, you fish. Uh, if you get on the website, and read these uh, qualifica qualification rules and stuff and gives you the payout and all that kind of stuff uh, on what's going on there. And then the championship uh, for 150 boats uh, is $10,000. So uh, uh, there's three qualifying tournaments, plus you can qualify through the Heartland Anglers uh, uh, that way and uh, $10,000 payback in their classic or their championship. So, uh, you know, that's a, that's, that's a good deal right there. And uh, that, like I said, that's April the 19th, Fort Loudon at the Canal. And uh, then you got the Tennessee Tow Trail, uh, which kicks off here uh, <coughs> uh, Chuck's April the 22nd. And, uh, you know, these, guys, these, mm -hmm. uh, these are tournaments that's on Loudon. Teleco, Mike, yeah, yeah. you know, uh, in the afternoons, uh, 6 to 10 p.m. on Tuesdays uh, and that kind of thing. Uh, Brandon Coulter's uh, uh, a big, uh, uh, I think this is one of his uh, uh, tournaments that he's uh, highly involved in. Got a lot of sponsors down here, and uh, uh, you can get some more information. Go to www tntoad.com and uh, get all that information, restoration form for that, and, and uh, good thing of that. And it's qualifying for the Bassmaster Classic. Uh, so, uh, uh, you, you, you know, there's a lot of things with that information right there. I uh, want to make sure we get that. Uh, then you're moving right along. Uh, uh, the next uh, Point 19 Heartland Tournaments, uh, April the 12th at uh, Point 19 on Norse. And then the uh, uh, Watts Bar to Dam is uh, this coming Saturday, March the 29th. 
uh, that's at Watts Bar Dam. Uh, and you got one at Douglas Dam, uh, April the 12th. Uh, just on and on and on, you know, with these tournaments. The next one at Lad, here at see the Candy Creek Watts Bar, uh, April the 19th. Uh, uh, excuse me. There, yeah, uh, April the 5th. Their next tournament's April the 5th there at Candy Creek. So uh, a lot of things going on. And then at Lad Landing, uh, April the 12th. Uh, so, uh, you know, just everywhere, Milton Hill, uh, Carbide Park, uh, April the 19th, uh, mm -hmm. on, on their next tournament. That's Robbie Hazel and Scott Winchester. So, uh, you know, right here close by, <coughs> Fish, Milton Hill, Watch Bar, Norris, Mike. Yeah, uh, just pick your poison. You can pick your poison on that deal, uh, that's for sure, uh, you know. Plenty of them going on, without a doubt. Uh, so, uh, you know, that's uh, that's what we got on the tournament trails. Uh, that kind of thing. Yeah, it just makes me sad to think that bunch at work, they will just want to work six days a week with all this fishing going on. Yeah, I, I know exactly <clears throat> what you're saying. That's, uh, I, I, that's, that's true, Mike, that's true. Uh, I don't know how we're going to get off. Neither. You know, uh, we got to figure out something. Uh, don't we, we'd like to have a little bit of rain, but not too much rain. Not too much, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Too much would knock us out for two days. We just want enough to get one. Yeah, that's that right. the, that the deal. Yeah, we're gonna do a rain dance. Yeah, Friday evening. Friday evening. Yeah. All right, you heard that. I'll have the cameras. I'll have the uh, camera batteries charged up, and and uh, uh, we can go. Uh, uh, Jack Rains, I hope you're listening. Uh, I'll call you tomorrow and let you know about the shirts, where to pick them up at, and uh, we'll go from there. Yeah. Uh, on that deal. Uh, it's going to be a wild weekend anyway with all these turkey hunters taking off this weekend. That's true. <clears throat> that, that's true, Mike. Uh, definitely for a fact. Um uh, but folks, do do sign up for the free fishing trip. Uh, it, you know, if you're going into one of the sponsors' businesses, ask them where the box is. You know, for the free fishing trip, and they're sitting right up front, pretty much, uh, about everywhere you go. Uh, I put Junior down at uh, Reynolds Racing. He's in charge of the box down there. Yeah. And uh, so if you, if you walk up to the counter, just ask him where you sign up at for the free fishing trip, and he'll direct you to the box. And the banks have got them sitting right there uh, as you walk in the door yeah. uh, on their display table. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, so, uh, you know, uh, you can get, get it there. And over at Bunches, they got, uh, uh, just as you walk in, if you turn the corner headed over to the parts counter, the box is a big blue box sitting yeah. right there. Uh, but, you know, if you can't find it, ask them. Uh, Tim's Tire, it's in there in the office. Uh, when you go in there to, uh, uh, to the counter back right there in the back there at the office to pay your bill or ask about your tires, just ask one of them ladies. They'll direct you right to the sign-up box. Uh, Edgemore Outdoors, Jim's got it sitting right there on the counter just as you walk in on your left. And like I said, ask Jim about it. And... Uh, He'd be more than glad to let you, uh, you know, sign up. So uh, got one at the sign shop. Uh, it's sitting right there on their counter. So folks, sign up so we can get a bunch of tickets in here and, and have a great time. If this thing turns out good, I'd like to do one later this fall uh, when it cools back off. Cools back off, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Herschel, let's see, take us to that uh, Edgemore Outdoors, would you? Hey folks, I'm here at Edgemore Outdoors and I got one of Jim's customers here, Brian Ray. Brian, great to meet you, man. Nice to meet you. All right. Brian's been here looking for some bass stuff, but he tells me he is a trout guide up in the National Forest. 
Yep, absolutely. All right, tell us about your business so far. All right, so Smokey's Angling Adventures. It's uh, owned by David Barry. Uh, he does a lot of bass and uh, crappie fishing trips, and then uh, and then I take care of the uh, the trout fishing trips, all the fly fishing up in the national park. It's a uh, it's a it's a good business. We have our uh, liability insurance, all our commercial use uh, permits for the park. Uh, everything's legitimate. We take a lot of people, have oh. a lot of fun, catch a lot of fish. Sounds good. Well, what got you in here to edge more outdoors? I come down here and pick my little nephews up in this area and uh, stop in here and buy a few things and uh, just started uh, started coming in here about a about a week ago I guess two weeks ago and uh, got good prices on everything. Yeah. Yeah. Jim's kind of contagious, ain't he? Once you catch it, you can't get rid of it. Uh, yeah, yeah. He's, <laughs> he's, he's like the flu. You just, uh, you, you just gotta you just gotta deal with it. You I heard that. He yeah. tells you everything in the store. You come in for a pack of hooks and you leave with a rod and reel. And... Uh, yes, sir. I know the feeling. I know exactly. Well, listen, Brian, I appreciate you, man. Thank you. All right. Thank you. See you. All right. <laughs> hey, folks. Let me pass this along to you. All you Heartland guys know that Denali Rods is a, a sponsor of the Heartland, and they also, Jim sells the Denali Rods, and he's got a special on them right here. If you buy a $99 rod, it's on sale for $84.99, folks. And then the, uh, the $109 rods are on sale for $94.99. Uh, 99 okay. and then you come down here and here's some more rods it's $129 and they're on sale for $114.99 then the rods that uh, are 139 they're they're uh, 119 even and then the rods that's a 149 they're 129 and you guys you know you fishermen all know that when you get you know you go from the uh, uh, six and a half foot rods up to the seven and a half and then up to the eight uh, and, and bigger they, they get more expensive so that's what the price change is but get over here and see Jim on those rods and you got to mention the let's go fishing show to get this discount and another thing too he's got these loose reels for uh, the regular $199 they're $179.99 and then the ones that's $149.99 is $129.99 so uh, pretty good savings, uh, over 20 bucks each on those reels there. And like I said, you got to mention the Let's Go Fishing Show. And I'm going to tell you why I was here. I just got this right here handed to me. Uh, Reaction Innovations. Jim's been waiting for a year to get these baits right here, folks. And he, they was a box came in here. I don't know. They may be uh, uh, 48 of them or... Uh, how many? Close to a hundred of them. Close to a hundred of them, and there's, I've seen five different colors, and and uh, so uh, you guys been looking for these baits right here. Well, he's got them. They just came in just a few minutes ago. Opened the box to see, and uh, so get over here and look at these uh, uh, Reaction Innovation top water plugs and uh, some other baits that he's got came in, and and uh, remember the Let's Go Fishing Show. All right, folks, we're back. Uh, right quick, we don't have much time. Eli Copeland. Mike, Eli's got a nice small mouth. He caught down at Watch Bar Dam and uh, below the dam. And he's got a big catfish here that he caught on, uh, I believe, a six or eight pound test line on a crappie jig. Ooh. Yeah, and, and that's a pretty good sized cat, Mike. Yeah, it is. Uh, I'm sorry. Yeah, it's a uh, yeah, pretty good yeah. sized catfish. He had a fight out of that. Yeah, he said it took him 30 minutes to get <clears> him. <throat> yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so, Herschel, you're the catfish guru. Uh, uh, yeah, that's a pretty good deal, folks. Eli Copeland. Uh, man, I, I had some great correspondence with Eli. Uh, sent him a long, lengthy email last night, and uh, uh, he's a young gentleman. Loves fishing. 30 seconds. So, uh, but well, listen, remember to sign up. Uh, God bless you. Hope to see you next week. And Mike, we got to have some fishing film. Got to have some film. All right, folks. See you next week.